మైసెల్ డాక్టర్ సిఆర్ కే సౌడ్ అసోసియేటెడ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫిజిక్స్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ ఏరోనాటికల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ బిల్డింగ్ అండ్ హైదరాబాద్ టుడే ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ది స్పెక్ట్రోస్కోపిక్ అండ్ జెస్ క్యాన్ ఇన్వెస్టిగేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఎండి స్పెక్ట్రోస్కోప్ జింక్ టెలరేట్ బేస్డ్ గ్లాసెస్ దిస్ ఇస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇంపార్టెంట్ టాపిక్ ఫ్రమ్ ది లేసర్ గ్లాస్ స్పెక్ట్రోస్కోపి సో అవుట్ అయిన అది టుడే టాక్ ఈస్ ఆన్ ది ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ సో వీ హ్యావ్ టు గో డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ది ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ ఆన్ ది స్పెక్ట్రోస్కోపిక్ అండ్ జెస్ క్యాన్ ఇన్వెస్టిగేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఎండి స్పెక్ట్రోస్కోప్ జింక్ టెలరేట్ బేస్డ్ గ్లాసెస్ నెక్స్ట్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంటల్ టెక్నిక్స్ and methods of the jet scan investigation of nd spectroscope zinc tetrahedral glasses and preserve discussion of the uh, nd spectroscope the zinc tetrahedral based glasses and finally conclusion of the summary of the present talk so introduction first introduction is motivation of error theorems this is a modern periodic table you know the modern periodic table we are going to discuss about the lanthanide uh, ions are error theorems in the black elements that is a black elements from cerium to lutetium so in this we are going to discuss about the nd doped that is element number 60 that is nd doped uh, zinc tetrahedral based glasses we are going to discuss about the a black element of the nd tetrahedral stop what are the importance of lanthanum tetrahedral science among the lanthanides the nd is very important prominent uh, transparent elements that is mainly it will gives the near infrared region emissions that is why we are focusing on the nd tetrahedral stop Uh, zinc tetrahedral based glasses what is the fascinating optical properties of the rare elements there is a luminescence from the f to f transition characteristic emission of, of each and every element shows the each and every emission characteristic emission the belongs to the rare elements and narrow emission lines high chromatography purity its emission colors is not very depends on the ions environment it depends on the dependent and host dependent and constant dependent also we can study this large stokes it also we can study by using the rare elements or lanthanide ions this direct excitation in qf levels is not efficient this incidence luminescence is stupid and long excited state lifetimes also studied these are the important to fascinating optical properties so usually lanthanide ions are black elements is shielded of qf orbitals similarly chemical properties and electrostatic bonding and variable geometry that means we can choose the different kind of concentration variation and the host variation also you can use to study the different kind of rare earth elements these are the importance of lanthanide ions next what is the rare earth elements the 4f and 5f 5f black elements and the unique trivalent state of 4f and electron electrons shielded by the 5s2 and 5p6 electrons and so many advantages glass is an indisputable photonic platform material due to its high optical transparency and a thermomechanical strength and ability to shape into almost unlimited range of geometrical structures and compositions so these are the importance of glasses what are the applications involved in the rare earth elements so laser gain media fiber amplifiers optical components medical accessories and massive structures and entertainment and etc these are the important applications whenever rare earth elements are lanthanides doped in the different kind of host materials what are the rare earth elements in the glasses particularly what are the important application mainly in the rare earth elements particularly the, the many applications are available but main application is laser gain media optical fiber amplifiers etc these are the very important because laser glasses it exhibit the high stimulated emission transition at the same time higher life time these are the important parameter to study the a different kind of host materials doped with rare earth elements so main thing is laser gain media and optical fiber amplifiers applications also they are using for the different kind of rare earth elements doped in laser glasses as introduction so rare earth doped tetrahedral glasses we are now we are going to study the zinc based tetrahedral glasses that is tetrahedral glasses have been sub- a subject of increasing interest in the last few years among the oxide glasses tetrahedral glasses exhibit the lowest polar energy this is around polar energy is 780 cm whenever the low polar energy the tetrahedral glasses having the low polar energy compared to borate silicate and phosphate glasses so its polar energy value is 780 cm that is from raman studies we can study the polar energy band that is around 780 cm inverse which increases the quantum efficiency of the excited state of nd spectral science in this matrix and provides the possibility of developing more efficient lasers and optical amplifiers that is why we are choosing the zinc based tetrahedral glasses because it's having the low polar energy it's around 780 cm of the 
Prana energy. That is why it will increase the quantum efficiency in the excited state of the anti pupil science. That is why it is more useful for the near infrared laser applications. It will be useful for the anti pupil local glasses in the base of zinc tilted glasses. So, tilted glasses are attractive worst in order to obtain efficient NIR fluorescence and NIR to visible energy transfer of conversion through electronic transition of the direct ions. So, this is the near infrared region to visible energy of conversion also it takes place by using the tilted based glasses. The addition of optically transparent transition metal oxides such as titanium oxide this is one of the transition metal ion that is titanium oxide and neobium oxide Nb2O5 and tellurium oxide. These are the non-linear optical characters of values of tellurium oxide based glasses and enhance it further. Whenever we are adding the transition metal of titanium oxide and neobium oxide and tellurium oxide, this automatically these three important chemical value it will increase the non-linear optical characteristic value that is the N2 value. This is N1 is linear refractive index, N2 is non-linear refractive index will be increasing whenever adding the host material is a modifier as we are using is a titanium oxide or neobium oxide or tellurium oxide. So that is why it will increase the non-linear optical characteristic due to the high polarity of the titanium pore plus ions. That is why we are using titanium oxide. This is one of the important um, transition metal oxides. That is here whenever it um, used as a modifier in the host matrix, automatically it will increase the non-linear refractive index. That is, and also it is due to the high polarity of the titanium pore plus ions. Therefore, the presence of titanium oxide in the telluride glasses may exhibit interesting optical and electro-optical properties with potential applications. Whenever this titanium oxide is used in the host matrix of the telluride glasses, automatically it will exhibit the interesting optical and electro-optical properties with potential applications is involved in the telluride glasses. Next, what is the material selection? In the present study, we are using the material selection highlights in fact advantages behind the selection of zinc tilted glass system for present study. That is spectroscopic and the jet scan investigation of any spectroscope with zinc tilted based glasses. We are going to discuss in this paper what are the chemical components we used in the present study. That is, we are using 75 minus x mole percent of tellurium oxide and 15 mole percent of zinc oxide, 5 mole percent of neobium oxide and 5 mole percent of titanium oxide and x mole percent of neodymium oxide. So x means we are varying the concentration from 0 0.01 concentration, low concentration 0 0.01 to 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1 mole, 1.5 mole, 2 mole. These are the different concentration we are varying the x value. In the case of x we are varying the concentration of neodymium 3 plus ions. So in the present host material, tellurium oxide and zinc and neobium and titanium oxide. So that is why this is one of the important host material to study the optical and non-linear optical properties also we can study the by using the titanium oxide in the case of tellurium based glasses. <coughs> this is the experimental techniques preparation of the glasses here preparation of glasses here conventionally melt quenching technique this is a traditional method or conventional method to prepare the glass materials to synthesize the glass material by using the conventional melt quenching technique. Initially, we need to take the above mentioned chemicals, tellurium oxide, zinc oxide, neobium oxide, titanium oxide, neodymium oxide. These are the different chemicals we are taking to the electrical um, uh, furnace. Uh, first, we need to measure the weight of the each and every chemical. The batch composition we can take is the 25 grams. That 25 grams of chemical we are put into the agate mortar and crush the fine powder. After taking the fine powder, we are put into the platinum crucible and cover with the platinum lid. Then after uh, taking the chemical in the platinum crucible, we keep into the electrical furnace. That is melting temperature is for tilted glasses is 70 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes only. We need to melt duration time is 30 minutes at the temperature of 70 degrees centigrade. After melting the chemical composition, we have poured into the preheated brass mold. The preheated brass mold at the temperature of 350 degrees centigrade for 10 hours. This we are using for annealing temperature. That is annealing temperature 350. Why we are using the annealing temperature means what is the purpose of annealing means we need to avoid the thermal stress and strain. That means whenever pour into the high temperature 380 degrees centigrade to low, room temperature automatically glasses will be break. That is why to avoid the that cracks or some break to avoid the thermal stress and strain we need to do the annealing. So annealing is we are using at 350 degrees centigrade. 
duration is 10 hours. After 10 hours, we need to cool down the normal cooling from to room temperature. Then after taking to the glass sample for cutting and polishing, then we are study for the spectroscopic analysis. First, initially we need to study the XRD measurement, XRD profile. So XRD we need to measure the so prepared sample is completely shows the amorphous of the glassy nature or crystal nature. So whenever we are studying the XRD profile, we are getting the all the XRD peaks we are broad peaks we are observing. That means it it is uh, completely shows the glassy nature or amorphous nature. Whenever we are getting the soft crystalline peaks, means that shows the crystalline nature. So in our present study, it shows the uh, completely glassy nature or amorphous nature. So we can study for the further characterizations. Next, experimental technique or calibration methods. First, we need to measure the optical absorption spectra. So, optical absorption is carried out by using the Perkin Elmer spectrometer lambda 950, that is a model of number lambda 950, in the wavelength range from 250 to 2500 nanometer. We are studying the optical absorption spectra. Next, fluorescence and lifetime measurements are carried out by using the here in this uh, neodymium doped glasses, we are studying the only near infrared emission, not visible emission. We are studying the near infrared emission. The measure at the FLS 980 spectrometer by exciting at 980 nanometer. We are pumping energy we are using is 980 nanometer, that is NIR wavelength by laser diode, a spectral resolution of 1 nanometer, and the instant power of the laser beam power is we are using 650 milliwatt. So NIR decay times were measured by exciting the sample with 980 nanometer laser diode. Power is P equals 600 milliwatt with the frequency of 100 Hz detected with the indium gallium arsenide detector with con connected with the digital oscilloscope. We are measuring the lifetime measurements of the NIR decay times of the NDTOP zinc tablet based glasses. So, all the measurements were carried out at room temperature only. So, these are the optical absorption spectra and NIR emission spectra and lifetime measurements were carried out at room temperature only. So, these are the experimental technique methods of characterization of the ND triplet doped zinc tilt based with glasses. Next, result and discussion. First, we need to measure the optical absorption spectra of ND triplet doped zinc tilt based glasses. This is the absorption spectra wavelength versus absorption coefficient. We are getting the different, say, ND triplet ion ground state is quarter 9 by 2, different excited state um, absorption peaks are observed from quarter 9 by 2, different excited state. So, this figure shows the optical absorption spectra of 1 mole percentage of ND plus doped tilted glasses is scanning from the optical absorption wavelength scanning from 400 to 950 nanometer spectral region along with the assignment of absorption bands. The assignments of the absorption bands has been made according to the LR studies of ND plus doped glasses. See, the absorption bands are we are observing each and every bands 431 and 474, 514, 527, 584. 628, 682, 748, 805, yes, 875 nanometers correspond to transition from the ground state to quarter 9 by 2, different kind of exit states from 3P1 by 2, 2G5 by 2, quarter G9 by 2, quarter G7 by 2, next 2G7 by 2, 2H11, these are the different excitation levels from the ground state of the ND3 plus ion, quarter 9 by 2, different kind of exit states we are observed in the optical absorption spectrum. Now, among the all the absorption spectra we are getting highest excitation absorption wavelength is we are getting here 40 g 5 by 2 2 g 7 by 2 transition that we are going to use for the emission spectra analysis see this is the by using the optical absorption spectra only by using the jude of rate intensity parameters that is jude of rate intensity theory this is reference number 6 and 7 by using that theory we are going to calculate the by using absorption spectra data only we are calculate the jude of rate intensity parameters that is Omega 2, Omega 4, Omega 6, and the trend, what kind of trend it follows the present study. And psi is the spectroscopic quality factor that is psi is Omega 4 by Omega 2. So, in present study, the Omega 2 value is 6.32 into 10 power of minus 20 centimeters square. Omega 4 is 3.06 into 10 power of minus 20 centimeters square. Omega 6 is 4.56 into 10 power of minus 20 centimeters. Among the Three intensity parameters, omega 2 value we are getting higher value compared to omega 4 and omega 6. So this is shows that the, the larger value of omega 2 parameter in the present study class indicates the higher covalence and higher rigidity between the ND3 plus ions to oxygen ion. The oxygen ions is the ligands of the environment surrounded by the rarer elements of ND3 plus ions. 
So this is so the omega 2 value we are getting higher value compared to omega 4 and omega 6. That is why it shows the higher covalency as well as higher residue between the ND3 plus ions and oxygen O2 minus ions. <coughs> Next, the NIR emission spectra. So NIR emission spectra, this is the NIR emission spectra excitation wavelength of 980 nanometer we are used for the different concentration of ND3 plus ions, low, low concentration of 0 0.01 to 2 mole percentage of ND3 plus ions. You see the different concentration we are seeing the, the concentration increasing the luminescence, NIR luminescence in such a increasing at the sun, sun, sun temperature uh, concentration it will be decreasing. See as uh, seen from the figure the emission spectra exhibited three emission bands. So here you are observing here three emission bands. One is water F3 by 2, water I 9 by 2, exhibited to ground state. The second one is water F3 by 2, water I 11 by 2, next water F3 by 2, water I 30 by 2. These are the different emission transitions from the ND3 plus ions. So in this transition among these three transitions, the transition of 1062 attributed to water F3 by 2, water I 11 by 2 transition. So this transition we are getting the highest intensity transition that is around wavelength is 1062 nanometer. So this is the potential transition with the high intensity than the rest of the other two transitions. So this intensity of water F3 by 2, water 11 by 2 transition increase with increase of any ion concentration up to 0 0.5 mole concentration. So up to 0 0.5 mole concentration increasing the concentration and luminescence intensity also increasing. After beyond the 0 0.5 mole percentage of ND3 plus ion, this decreasing the luminescence intensity that is source the concentration switching takes place from the at the point of 0 0.5 mole percent. More than the 0 0.5 concentration automatically luminescence intensity will be decreasing that is mainly due to the concentration switching. So switching of the switching with increasing of ND3 plus ion concentration due to the enhancement Enhanced interaction between the exerted state of ND3 plus ions to ground state of ND3 plus ions. That is the energy transfer takes place from exerted state ND3 plus ions to ground state ND3 plus ions. That is why concentration switching will be takes place, particularly 0 0.5 mole per concentration of ND3 plus ions. <coughs> from luminescence analysis, that the emission NIR emission spectra only by using the emission spectra, we are calculating the different radiative transition probability A value, radiative transition probability. Branching ratio and a radiative lifetime. So we are calculating for similar emission cross section, we are calculating by using this formula and full width of maximum also we are calculating and a branching ratio. Each and every emission spectra under the emission spectra area we are calculating by using KK area only we are calculating the branching ratio values. These are the NIR emission spectra. From emission spectra only we are calculating the different radiative properties. Let's come into the NIR emission spectra only we are calculating the peak value of the wavelength and full width of maximum, area to transfer property, branching ratio experimental and calculated and stimulated emission cross section sigma lambda p. So we are getting NIR emission spectra, we are getting three emission bands, quarter 9 by 2, quarter 11 by 2, quarter 30 by Among the three transitions, quarter 11 by 2 is the highest maximum intensity at particularly 1062 nanometer. This value is showing C here, the stimulated emission cross section, quarter 9 by 2 value is 1.03 only. And quarter 11 by 2, 4.83, and quarter 13 by 2 is 1.33 into 10 power of minus 20 centimeters. So, this is stimulated emission cross section. So, particularly, this wavelength of 1062 nanometer, we are getting the higher stimulated emission cross section. That is why it is useful for the NIR laser emissions we are using. the. So, this is one of the important parameter because ND3 plus doper glasses it exhibit the highest luminescence intensity, particularly in the NIR region. At the wavelength of 1062 nanometer, it is having the highest stimulated cross section. That is why it will be useful for the high power laser applications we are using for the ND3 plus doped tubular based glasses. <coughs> Next, decay time measurements. So, decay times of quarter of 3 by 2 level have been measured by exciting the 808 nanometer, focusing the emission is 1062 nanometer for different ND3 plus concentrations. See the all the concentration of the NIR decay lifetimes exhibit the single exponential nature of ND3 plus. So all the decay lifetimes will exhibit the single exp exponential nature. From the single exponential, we have found the lifetimes of the each and every concentration from starting from low concentration of 0 0.01 um, mole concentration, we are getting the 174 microseconds to 
higher concentration of two mole per cent of N D three plus N get in the sixty six microseconds. That is the N D three plus concentration from zero point zero one to two mole concentration. This are we are calculated the by using the single exponential answer by using the that uh, single exponential curve fitting only we are calculated the uh, tau x metal values. So it is observed that the with the increasing of N D three plus N concentration the lifetime of the water three by two level is decreased. The quenching of lifetime with increasing the concentration of N D three plus ions could be due to the presence of cross relaxation process. That is mainly due to the cross relaxation process energy quenching takes place due to excited state N D three plus ions to ground state N D three plus ions. That is why energy transfer takes place. So this is the partial energy level diagram of N D three plus group T J N B T I N D glasses. From energy level, this is the energy level diagram for N D three plus. Here the energy level different energy levels from ground state. Four by nine by two different excited state. We are energy we are pumping eight point eight nanometer and we are getting three emission channels. One is nine zero two nanometer, other one is one zero six two nanometer, other one is one three thirty six nanometer. Among the three emission mass, one zero six two nanometer is the highest luminous NIR emission. That is why it is having the uh, higher student emission cross section, higher branching ratio. Each and every parameter will be higher. At the same time, quantum emission is also more in the Particularly at the wavelength of 1062 nanometer, that is why this NT3 plus dopant children based laser glasses used for the high power laser optics is also we are using. This is energy transfer takes place from the that is mainly due to the cross relaxation channels that is mainly involved in the cross relaxation channels. Quarter uh, three by two, quarter thirteen by two, quarter nine by two, quarter fifteen by two. Otherwise, quarter three by two, quarter fifteen by two, quarter nine by two, quarter fifteen by two. These are the different kind of energy transfer takes place from the ground state at the triple side to excited state at the triple side. That is why concentration pinching and energy transfer takes place in the case of at the triple slope zinc tilted based glasses. So Jetson technique is a unique technique to study the nonlinear refractive index. By using Jetson technique, we are studying the open aperture and closed aperture refractive index study. See here. Just can this x-axis we are z in centimeter. That means z position. The distance will be you are varying and normalized transmitters we are uh, observing in the y-axis. So this is a open aperture. That means open aperture means we are slit is open 100 percent. That is here a slit value is we are open 100 percent. Exciting with 750 argon ion laser we are using. Power is we are using a 80 milliwatt in the N D three plus two glasses of one mole concentration of the glass we are getting the open aperture. B is we are closed aperture. That means we are slit is opening only thirty percent only. Seventy percent will be covered with um, uh, completely covered and only thirty minutes to open. Uh, on that thirty minutes slit with only we are observing the closed aperture. Just can mm. profile by using this open aperture just can uh, closed aperture uh, just can profile. We are calculating the nonlinear refractive index and uh, real value of uh, imaginary part of the nonlinear refractive index values. See the Jetson technique. The open and closed Jetson measurements have been carried out in the N D three plus dope one mole concentration of N D three plus dope glasses. Next, chopper the we are using continuous C W laser of titanium sulfide laser with frequency of f equal four ten edges by collecting the data in terms of initial time is ten microseconds, final time is seven fifty microseconds. After the chopper is opening, the laser was turned at seven forty nanometer. The line centers of the quarter nine by two quarter and the exact state of the so measurements were recorded at low laser pump power. That's it, ten milliwatt. Resulting in intensity is smaller than the thirty watt per centimeter square. The open and closed aperture non normalized just scan transmitters curve could be almost perfectly fitted by the proper expression by using the reference number eight. And it is clearly shown that the figure A and B shows the closed aperture and open aperture. The Z not value is Z not is mainly. We are calculating by using the phi omega naught square by lambda. So lambda here is seven five eight nanometer. Phi is the three point four. Omega naught is the laser beam spot width. That is, we are focusing the the titanium sapphire laser. That laser beam focusing width is omega naught. By using that one, we are calculating the Z naught value. That is around zero point four seven centimeter has been obtained, and the real and the imaginary part of the nonlinear refracting this is. Into there is a real part of nonlinear refracting is 2.1 in 10 power of minus 8 centimeter square per watt, and the imaginary part of nonlinear refracting is into double dash is 2.4 into 10 power of minus 8 centimeter square by double two. These are the n1 dash and n2 dash. These are sorry n2 dash and n2 double dash. Therefore, 
the condition of jernat less than l that is sample thickness is 0.2 cm jernat we are getting the 0.47 cm it should be less than 0.2 has been satisfied the calculated values of polarizability delta alpha p polarizability absorption coefficient that is delta alpha p is 4.2 into 10 power minus 20 centimeters delta sigma is 1.1 into 10 power minus 20 centimeters these are we are calculating by using the jet scan technique only we are calculating the non-linear refractive index of n1 n2 dash and n2 double dash these are real part and imaginary part of the non-linear refractive index we are calculating by using the jet scan at the same time you are calculating the delta sigma and the delta alpha p values of the we are calculating by using the jet scan technique is finally conclusion the zinc tellurate based glasses nd3 plus ions have been prepared and characterized their optical and luminescence properties and time result jet scan studies also we have studied and judo of eight parameters have been used to predict the radiative properties of the important luminescent levels of one mole concentration of tellurate based glasses the emission spectra of the present glass shows the strong near infrared emission particularly at the wavelength of 1062 nanometer corresponding transition is 4f3 by 2, 4f11 by 2 transition with higher stimulated emission cross section is 4.8 in 10 power minus 20 centimeters square and experimental branching ratio is 59 percent. Figure of merit value is 6, sorry, 63.2 into 10 power minus 25 centimeters. No quantum efficiency we are getting around 79 percent. The, the decay time of the NIR emission is 4f3 by 2 level decreasing with increasing of ND3 plus concentration in the present glasses. From the jet scan studies, we have studied the delta RP polarity difference and the delta sigma also we have calculated. At the same time, we are calculating the nonlinear refractive index of imaginary part and the real part also we have studied. So finally, the ND3 plus dope materials, this property is very interesting for the nonlinear applications and high power level laser applications also can be useful for the tellurium based ND doped glasses. So these are the references involved in the present study of the spectroscopic and jet scan investigation of NDT plus slope zinc tellurate based glasses. So these are the important references. So this paper is published in the Journal of Luminescence in the year of 2017. So in this study we are focused on the spectroscopic analysis of the absorption spectra, NIR luminescence and lifetime measurements. At the same time we are measuring the jet scan investigation of NDT plus slope zinc tellurate based glasses. These are the references cited in the present work. So thank you. Once again thank you. This class will be continued in the next session. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.